When one thinks of Mesozoic crocodilians and their semi-aquatic relations, what usually comes to mind is either species very similar to today's crocodiles or massive dinosaur-eating titans. However, the late Cretaceous waters were also home to a very different sort of creature, the narrow-snouted Thoracosaurus. Thoracosaurus lived in North America and Europe at the very end of the Cretaceous period. Unlike many other contemporary large reptiles, it survived into the Cenozoic era. Most Thoracosaurus fossils are from individuals that were about 4 to 5 meters long. One specimen from late Cretaceous North America is estimated to have been much larger, around 8 to 9 meters long. Whether this represents a new species, or merely a fully grown individual, is unclear. While not as large as Dinosuchus, who died out before Thoracosaurus evolved, this morph was still larger than any crocodilian alive today. Even the smaller Thoracosaurus specimens outclassed the other, contemporary, amphibious crocodilian morphs alive in late Cretaceous North America. Of course, Thoracosaurus wasn't simply a slightly smaller version of Dinosuchus. It had more in common with species like the Gavialoids, the Garial, and the False Garial. With its long, slender snout and interlocking teeth, Thoracosaurus's skull was very well adapted for catching fish, but less so for dealing with larger vertebrates. Today's gavialoids are also specialized fish eaters, also called piscivores. They hunt primarily by laying completely still in the water. When fish approach, they then make a quick, sideways strike to catch them in their jaws. Based on its similarities, Thoracosaurus likely hunted in a comparable manner. By focusing on fish, the gharial is able to coexist with the mugger crocodile, who is better at hunting larger, terrestrial species. Dividing resources in such a way is referred to as niche partitioning. Likewise, Thoracosaurus's fish-heavy diet allowed it to coexist with Borealosuchus and Brachychamsa. Still, while not the second coming of Dinosuchus, it is unlikely Thoracosaurus was restricted to aquatic prey. Though the modern gharial and other slender-snouted crocodilians are fish-hunting specialists, they also eat small, terrestrial vertebrates. The false gharial is even less specialized, sometimes even hunting deer. With its even greater size, the large Thoracosaurus morph would have been capable of dealing with even larger prey, its sheer size somewhat compensating for the inherent weakness of its slender snout. However, it may have had less opportunities to kill large, terrestrial animals than the false gharial does. While the modern-day gavaloids hunt in freshwater, Thoracosaurus's fossils are found in what were semi-marine environments. This means it would have had more opportunities to hunt small mosasaurs than dinosaurs. While all of the non-avian dinosaurs perished during the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period, along with most other living things, crocodilians in general fared better than most creatures. This was due to both their low metabolisms, resulting in less need for food than warm-blooded creatures like the dinosaurs, and because freshwater ecosystems were some of the least affected by the KPG extinction event. Still, Thoracosaurus was one of the more notable survivors, living in a marine environment and possessing a fairly large body size. Even though the 8 meter long morph doesn't seem to have survived the catastrophe, Thoracosaurus is still a contender for the largest survivor of the KPG extinction event. Its fish heavy diet was probably why it survived. While the number of fish Thoracosaurus was dependent on would have been fewer in number in the aftermath of the meteor, the prey of the other, large crocodilians, became completely extinct. Right now, Thoracosaurus's place in the crocodilian evolutionary tree is unclear. 
it has traditionally been placed with a few other species, who together are informally called the Thoracosaurs. Eothoracosaurus lived in eastern North America during the late Cretaceous period. The others instead lived during the Cenozoic era and have been found in North America, Europe, and Africa. As of right now, there is no clade formally called Thoracosaura. The Thoracosaurs were originally thought to be a paraphyletic grade of early gavialoids ancestral to the Garial. However, while the Thoracosaurs were considered to be more closely related to the Garial than to the false Garial, studies of crocodilian genetics have found the last common ancestor of the two living gavialoids lived only 40 million years ago long after the Thoracosaurs first appeared. A few years ago, a study concluded that Thoracosaurus and the other Thoracosaurs were not gavialoids, with their similarities largely being the result of them converging on a piscivorous diet. Indeed, they may not even be true crocodilians, though these findings remain debated. Even if Thoracosaurus wasn't a crocodilian, it is mostly a technicality. The clade Crocodilia is formed by the living species, their last common ancestor, and all of its descendants. While Thoracosaurus's gharial-like skull may have been the result of convergent evolution, its other crocodilian-like traits were the result of common ancestry. Still, determining its evolutionary relationships could be the key to solving lingering questions about the evolution of the Thoracosaurs, Gavaloidae, and Crocodilia as a whole. Hopefully, future research will be able to solve this mystery. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.